Welcome to Curiousaholic. My name is Evan, and I'm here with my favorite piano player, Heiko. Hello, beautiful people. So, before we get into today's topic, here's a quick rundown on how the podcast works. So, each episode, one of us chooses a topic they're curious about and reveals it live to the other person in the hopes to spark a deep discussion and to further our knowledge of the world around us. Yes, sir. That, that was a cool <laughs> intro. I like that one. That was nice, huh? Yeah. Didn't give out much of what it's going to be. Yeah, I told you it was like a, a neutral like vibe today. It wasn't like anything, you know, wacky or something. So that's what I try to create. Yeah, you, you emulated that pretty well, I think. Good. Alrighty. All right. So what do we got today? Well, you know, well, it's going to be, like I said, a neutral topic. So, you know, we got to ease into it a bit, even okay. though it's not nothing too crazy. But I want something exciting, man. <laughs> it's going to be exciting, but... Neutrally. Neutrally. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> if there is such a thing. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So how was your weekend? You know, small talk before. <laughs> it was good. We had a barbecue. Remember yeah, we that? did. <laughs> yeah. We had a barbecue. That was a good time. Finally. It was on Sunday. So we missed the... Uh, the yeah. a big event on on Sunday, <laughs> yeah, our uh, regular programming. Oh yeah, <laughs> was, that. That, but I wasn't the, referring to that about that. Oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was referring to the about the um, the Logan Paul and Floyd Mayweather fight. <laughs> okay where are, you, where are you getting with this you're probably you're probably thinking we're we're, we're gonna talk about like martial arts again or something again <laughs> no, we're not, but no, it's not that right. that's that's just my teaser so yeah like you know you missed something really interesting this okay. weekend you know, um the greatest boxer of all time versus you know like a youtuber like us i like us <laughs> yeah right now not as famous as he is but okay um yeah i did miss it i didn't watch it i saw some news about it some articles here yeah. and there. Did, um, did you see who won? Um, from what I read, I couldn't find anything of who won. It was more, yeah, like a neutral thing. Like it's neutral, <laughs> exactly. That's the vibe. <laughs> <No>. Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. Is that no. the topic about neutrality? No, no. So yeah, he uh, Floyd Mayweather won. Obviously, he's like the greatest boxer. Ever. Yeah, I think they kind of went to him unofficially, I guess. Or well, no, I went to decision. So. They fought eight rounds. Okay. And he won the decision. So he did technically win. He won. Oh, okay, he won. Okay. <laughs> but uh, uh, that's not really what I want to discuss today. Okay. Did, did you uh, did you he hear how much they, they made like uh, oh. for this fight? <laughs> <laughs> well, about that, I think there was some conflicting information, though. Like, some people were saying, like, he got a million, Floyd Mayweather and Logan around 250, 250K. But then they're saying, no, he got 20 million and the other got 10 million. Or I don't know. I don't even know what well, okay. the true numbers so, are. So, yeah, we're going to look at those numbers a bit. But you're right. It is a little conflicting. There is some confl conflicting information. Whoa, what? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So Floyd Mayweather <laughs> for an eight-round fight of three minutes each round which is a total of 24 minutes, made a possible maximum of 100 million USD. Okay, possible. Okay. So, no, but his sal the minimum was 50 million. So anything between 50 and 100, and it depends on, like, the pay-per-view, uh, like, revenue and all that, and he gets a share of all that. Jesus Christ, okay. Yeah. So, if that is true, I mean... Yeah. That's so, intense. Do you kind of see what uh, <laughs> I'm what getting to with this? Okay, I'm trying to guess, yeah, what the topic is today, um... <laughs> Is it about like the outrageous salary of athletes? Yeah, you're close, but it's, <laughs> you know, this is just an example of what I want to discuss. So yeah, wait, just before we get into it. Okay. Logan Paul made $20 million. Just think about that a second. $20 million for losing <laughs> an eight-round yeah. fight. Sure, beat me up, Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're YouTubers, you know. I, I'd fight Floyd for $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if people would <laughs> come in to watch. No, they I would guess. watch. The Curious to Holly crew get beat up by floyd mayweather yeah two people against one yeah would still get even, ass even if floyd mayweather would would be one person versus both of us he'd still win <laughs> yeah for sure so yeah the topic of today is going to be the uneven distribution of wealth <laughs> <laughs> wow what a segue okay <laughs> so basically as you can see the, oh my those, god poor fighters man yeah they have it hard huh? they really have it hard wow yeah. one got 20 the other 100 oh Damn, man. that's an uneven <laughs> yeah but like in all seriousness like clearly those numbers are like outrageous and okay. i don't understand how anyone 
on this planet could be like paid that much to fight someone else okay so i guess now we can take those two and then compare to to every everything to, else to basically right? everyone else yeah. yeah how uneven it is exactly um, yeah okay that's this is an interesting ooh, this is yeah it's where we're going in a there. little you know fiery even some yeah people. yeah so you know some people have it easy i guess and uh not everyone else gets the opportunity to fight for like a hundred million dollars did you appreciate that that picture I put on the slide of uh, Floyd Mayweather and his money? <laughs> Very envious. <laughs> Getting me mad now, riled he, up. Doesn't he look really happy? <laughs> he doesn't even have a smile on his face. <laughs> <laughs> he has like millions of dollars on a table in front of him, and he's just you know, just like, standing there and whatever. Wasn't he like broke a at face. one point? Oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. Maybe, maybe he probably had like some debt or something. Okay. I wouldn't be surprised. I'd heard like you know he had made millions and then just spend it all and got broke at one point anyways we don't care yeah he's got a lot of cash now <laughs> <laughs> he got a lot of cash as of uh, as of sunday yeah but yeah you know that's just an example of it um so okay i'm gonna ask you like a a deep question now <laughs> already do okay. you know what the american dream is <laughs> <laughs> But of course, the American dream is about getting in the suburbs, having a house, and you know, <laughs> living with a family with two kids, and uh, having a nice job, and your wife cooking for you. Well, yeah. I guess that's the fifties. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you know, the American dream is much like broader, broader than that, right? It's you know, doing what you want to do in life, and then making a living for it, and then providing for your family, and having the opportunity to do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, and, that's you know, the whole ideal. Yeah. So that kind of it just. To me, it's a bit like crazy because the Logan Paul and Mayweather fight for me was like a, a perfect example of the American dream. I don't know why. It's just think about Logan Paul, right? Just he he's like a YouTuber and he's like, eh, I'm not going to do YouTube anymore. Let me do boxing. He switches <laughs> to boxing and he makes butt loads of money in boxing and he's, just, he's living the life, you know? And you wouldn't think, you know, this random YouTuber would even exactly. have the chance it's cra it's it's so weird to me because it's kind of surreal, yeah. Like yeah, he's just like a guy that was doing Vine videos like back in 2013. I'm not a big like Logan no, Paul no, fan at yeah. all. Like I just this is yeah, basic stuff that I know about him. And you know, he he had that controversy, you remember back in like 2017? Oh yeah. And with like the the him filming like a suicide scene and all that. Yeah, in Japan. Exactly. Yeah. And then from there, I guess it's it's kind of cool to see that he like he he switched his life to like boxing and now i guess yeah him and his brother yeah they, they're both trying to get into that yeah i don't know honestly i don't really care if i'm a, you know interested really by care. that but no. i get the example you're trying to yeah so yeah i guess it's respectable in a sense but you know is it but i have a lot of buts yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> Is is the American dream as much as it could be like a good thing that he you know he 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 switched his life he turned his life around? Mm -hmm. Is it fair that he's making all that money? That's kind of one of what I want to address. Oh boy. Um, well, in the capitalistic view and the individualistic view of America, some people would say, yeah, you know, he he made his way through there and uh, he deserves it. But I'd uh, say otherwise. You know, exactly. Um, some people get more opportunities than other people. Some people get more lucky than other people. And, uh, you know, you get famous in one way and then that leads to having more chances to become even more famous and make more money. And it's just like a compounding effect, you know. And uh, did he get there on his own? I mean, we could debate that. Yeah, I guess he started, you know, small on Vine and then slowly built his reputation. But... It's tough. I don't think anyone like me, okay, deciding I want to fight Floyd Mayweather, or Floyd Mayweather, I can't just decide to do that. It's not as clear yeah. cut and easy for me as it is for him. I'm sure he was even surprised to to have landed that fight. To be honest, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, but I guess it depends from like the circumstances because they're like, oh my god, this is like his big YouTuber. Let's put him up against you know this classic boxer and yeah. uh, boatload of people are gonna watch. I saw I saw something uh, the UFC president tweeted today. He said something like, "Imagine if if Amanda Nunes, she's like the champion, uh, like at uh, in the UFC for the female uh, fighters. Yeah, 
in like two divisions. Imagine if she would fight Kim Kardashian. How, fun, <laughs> how funny that would be. <laughs> and how much that revenue. That would have, yeah, you see? Yeah. Yeah. Kim, so it's kind of a similar, Kim. you know, situation. Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a similar thing. So. Yeah, anyways, that was just my, my whole teaser. But let's let's get into the, the deep of it, right? Okay, cool. So, you know... Um, having some issues if, again. If, if my thing would want to work. There you go. <laughs> oh, we're having some... Again, as always. <laughs> okay. All right. All right, we should be good now. So, yeah, you know, we kind of discussed this already, but... Mm -hmm. Do sporting events deserve such large payouts that way? Honestly, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like straight up, like the the amount of money soccer players get, hockey players get, or any other, you know, big yeah. major sport games. It's just uh, ridiculous. I mean, I get it. Yeah. Okay. They're, they're athletes and they, they do, you know, a lot of work, a lot of, you know, physical, but do they really deserve that? I no. don't know. To be honest, like, I don't even think, like I said earlier, I don't think anyone deserves that kind of salary. I feel like it's uneven for, for, for some people, you know, some people could barely eat and provide for their children or whatever. And, you know, you see these guys making hundreds of millions off of, you know, fighting. Look, I'm a huge fight fan and I follow fighting like all the time yeah. and I still think it's ridiculous. I think it is. Yeah. But it's just the way the system is, man. Yeah, like and even between the sports, right? Even between like boxing and MMA, the salaries are like not even comparable. Boxing has way more money in it, and then, you know the uh, MMA has way less. What is that? I I have no idea. Just really? as an example, um, Kamaru Usman in his last pay per view fight, he only won I think like eight or ten million for beating Masvidal, and, really, and that was a title fight, you know, championship fight. And, you know, Floyd Mayweather made like a hundred million for an exhibition fight. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Like, even if you contrast between the sports, mm -hmm. it doesn't even add up. Like, that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, right? he made like 10 times more than the winner of MMA's uh, fight. Yeah, it makes no sense. Okay. So even there, you could see there's like a discrepancy somewhere, you know, it just doesn't make sense. I think in sports, there should be uh, like a salary cap on, on you know, some of these athletes' um income you know oh. it just doesn't make any sense you know like in hockey for example they have salary caps and you know you can make only a certain amount per year okay so they're capped to a certain amount but but even those amounts are ridiculous though yeah exactly but at least you know it can't it's not going to climb up to like you know 100 million 100 million, One million. Something. <laughs> but yes i agree that um it should be controlled a little more right yeah yeah exactly i mean but but that's the disbalance that you see how the system creates, you know, because people want to watch these players p play, you know, they want to watch these uh, events and all that money that comes in, they want to incentivize, you know, the players and the exactly. fighters and all that. So they're like, look at this big money, you know, you better fight. And then they, they are fighting and so more people are watching and so more money is getting yeah. in there. It motivates the, the athletes to, you know generate more money for the company or something and then right? it motivates them to make more events exactly. on and on yeah uh, i'm glad you me you mentioned the system because that's what we're going to be looking at next the system yes yeah i want to talk about so, the system um yeah so basically um let's look at some economic structures oh okay yeah i so like you, this you kind of see like how I'm, I'm making a segue into the next part here like where you know we're going to look at which kind of economic structure leads us to have more of an imbalance in like income uh, distribution, right? So some systems are going to have, you know, a more balanced approach and everyone's going to have a more, you know, evened out salary, whereas other structures are just going to have a lot of people that have all the income and then you have people that have mm -hmm. nothing in there, right? The 1%. Yeah, the 1% always... that has everything, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah. And then the rest don't have that much <laughs> no exactly so you know let's look at some of uh, the economic structures that we have today mm -hmm. um, so one of them is a traditional economic structure so what that is it's more like an old school uh type of uh e economy so you know they base their their income on uh, farming agriculture um very basic activities that would traditionally create income and some 
uh, cultures still use that. Okay, okay. So, like third world countries mm -hmm. or more like rural mm -hmm. areas, they would tend to have you know a very like simplistic system where they they you know they would perform these activities and they would make their money for the month and they would pay what they need and that's it right and there, there wasn't there's not a lot of you know interaction with like the market and stuff it's very like uh simple down to earth yeah. based on reality in a sense yeah, yeah you know they make money for what they need they they pay it and that's it you that's know? it yeah yeah so <clears throat> so that's sort of like more of a traditional uh, economic structure then we have a command economic structure hmm. so a command economic structure is basically you know where there's like a, an authority that kind of uh, dictates where the economy is going, right? So if you think about what that is, you know, mostly in, in communist countries is where you would see that, right? Okay. So let's say China, for example, uh, remove the um, cryptocurrencies from their, for any use of their, you know, their population can't use it. Okay, okay. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's why that's exist. why crypto started tanking re like downwards re recently because China pulled out of there. They said no, you guys are not allowed to use it. They're only allowed to use their, their local currency. cryptocurrencies. Oh, they can still use crypto, but their own. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. China is very like you know strict and yeah. So exactly. That's more of like a command uh, economy structure. So yeah, the government is you know scrutinizing everything, looking at everything, and uh, okay, decide taking all calling all the shots basically. Okay, okay, I see. All right, that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, and also these, you know, in communist countries, it's it's common that, you know, the the wealth is more evenly so distributed. So I guess communism we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, okay. But the, like, you know, the fancy term is command economic uh, structure. Okay, yeah, because I never heard that term, <laughs> command. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so essentially there's also, like, the, the market economic system. This is That's, like the opposite end of the spectrum right yeah so the market ec econ economic system is basically pure capitalism yeah where you know it's uh everyone could participate in the market um it's free trade and and all that stuff and you know capitalism everyone makes their own wealth yeah what we have in the western countries well yes and no because the the next point i was going to bring is we there's also such a thing where it's a mixed a system of uh, sure. economy which is yeah. kind of more what we tend to to lean towards here in okay. america it's not i don't think we're pure capitalism 100 yeah. the government still is implicated to some degree true you know? true okay yeah there's some socialism involved like you know sharing yeah, some of the exactly. wealth around yeah it's, yeah, not, yeah it's not each to their own yeah. i mean america is more towards that side though like they're less you know like Canada is more yeah. social, you know, benefits and right. free Medicare, whereas they're, you know, each for their own. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, if you if you try to compare the U.S. and Canada, there yeah. is a. I think their economy is a little different than ours, but a bit, it's yeah. still pretty similar. We're not experts in you know, <laughs> yeah, economy or or yeah, economists essentially. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. So those are the four you know, structures. And, you know, I wanted to ask a question. Um, Always a little. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. So um, I'm having some, some little technical issues today. Okay. Yeah. All right. So <laughs> out of these four systems or structures, which one do you think is the most unethical? <laughs> unethical. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> putting you on the spot. Which was the most unethical? Hmm. I guess which one hurts the most people? Yeah. At the end of the day. Well, you know how like on this podcast we always we always find the good and the bad. Okay. I think there is there are some good points about some structures, and there's there's also like a downside to each one. Right? Yeah, that's the thing. You know. Um, but I guess the most unethical. Maybe the command one. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. That that that's my opinion too. But yeah. you know, maybe because we don't live in a communist country, we don't see maybe the benefits. I, I'm not sure. Who knows? But um, uh, obviously, we live in a capitalist uh, country. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I mean, because it is more controlling. You know, there is less of the freedom. Yeah. In there, there um, is less freedom. But if you think about it, also, if you look at you know the the market uh based structure 
that we kind of live in mm -hmm. it could also cause that imbalance that we talk about right oh yeah, yeah yeah definitely no yeah just because you know we have freedom here to pursue our own businesses or you know get in the markets doesn't mean you know one person is not going to have boatload of wealth versus someone who's just going to be struggling and they're going to be like yeah, yeah well come on it's a free market you know get get your stuff together and <laughs> yeah so if you if you think about it that way i would say both of those are unethical to a certain degree you know oh yeah 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 definitely i'm not, I'm not just because i said the command one doesn't mean the other yeah. ones aren't at fault either exactly yeah yeah so there's always like good and bad in it in everything right so exactly yeah and i think you know not to toot our own horn here but you know like our country kind of adopts that you know mixed we live in canada by the way okay. <laughs> that mixed economy system where we you know we incorporate like some regulations in the economy and um some freedom yeah some market. freedom as well in the market you know i guess that's also a more balanced approach if you think about it right yeah yeah because there is some sort of command to it like control but then it's left for people to create their business and try to make their wealth right. but yeah having you know someone keeping an eye on the way the wealth is distributed where it's not you know having this huge imbalance right yeah because that's the thing i think with the capitalistic system it 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 so it assumes that you know if you're if you want to make money then you'll be able to make money yeah, exactly. it's all fine and dandy you know it's the open market go go get yourself a job but it's not that easy you know yeah and even in our capitalistic society we have big corporations huge mega you know companies who have a lot of control and you know competition against them is uh, almost impossible sometimes and uh, you end up working for those people and they they become bigger and bigger and it's mm. you know yeah exactly so it's not always that easy yeah so you know it's good to find balance of we course, always we always thrive for that that's that's what we need to find yeah even in economic systems yeah yep. so <laughs> all right next up so you know as much as <laughs> as we we like to talk about crypto <laughs> and you know i i i mentioned earlier that um you know the chinese government kind of stopped their population from investing into crypto and and stuff yeah um do you think like cryptocurrencies in general are they like an ethical means to to obtain wealth i almost feel like it's a cheat code you know uh, it's like you invest your money into something so easily you go online put your money and the more money you have at the beginning right the, the richer you, you are yeah. the more you can invest into crypto and the richer you become and it's so easy to get rich with the crypto if you have a lot of money to start with not to say that it's anyone could do it i'm just saying in a sense again yeah it puts the rich into you know that position of power where if they have a lot of money to well, start off as the saying goes the more money you have the more money you can make that's you know? yeah and exactly. the rich the rich that's 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 the difference between rich people and the peasants the rich make their money with money and you know us people we just work you know yeah <laughs> they they basically build upon their wealth and have their wealth basically working for them and using their assets as uh, yeah <laughs> drivers for that mm -hmm. yeah and it, it's crazy because if you think about it also um there are very little regulations on investment right you could there's not like a, a maximum amount you could put into crypto per year i could be wrong about that but I don't think there's like a like a cap. Yeah, I know no, you get taxed. Is. I know you get taxed a lot if um, you know you start investing more and more money more, yeah. in crypto. But you know there aren't v many regulations uh, saying you know you're you could only invest this much per year. Right? Well, it's like any stocks or any other investments. I don't exactly. Think there's a limit necessarily. Yeah. It depends how much you're willing to spend. Yeah, I'm limiting this to crypto, but in a sense. You know, but, investing into stocks is the same thing, right? Yeah. Any other securities on the market, stocks, bonds, or real estate, or yeah. any other type of investment. So, yeah. Is it unethical? <clears throat> I don't think so entirely, but it, I find it is unfair to a certain degree that, you know, people that have a lot of wealth to start off with will end up with more, you know, of this cryptocurrency. Uh, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
it's how could I say this? Like, yeah, we're we're talking about is it fair, basically? Yeah, you know, it depends. Is you know what is fair, basically? Well, if you're born in a rich family, then obviously you have a big advantage. You yeah. know, and you tell someone who's born, you know, in a poor neighborhood and has to try to climb their way up. And a lot of times, you know, the cards are stacked against them. And then if they're not able to do that, you're like, man, look at me. I got my big company. I'm a CEO. What's wrong with you? You know, it's a free market. You know, well, is it that free? You know, mm. didn't you have, you know, generational wealth passed down onto you? And that was able to push you further. Exactly. Um, so yeah yeah so now we established that there is a certain degree of unfairness there yeah but is there is it unfair for governments to tell their population not to invest into crypto the other way around you know how like china did oh okay um you know what the government the, the way i see the government you know doing their thing right regulating or controlling is this okay if we're gonna control something Make sure that, you know, uh, we get something out of this. Whereas, you know, if this is an opportunity for me to have wealth, because this is the system where we're in this game, right? Okay. And you're not letting me play this game and I'm becoming poorer because of that. And you're not, you know, trying to balance that with some other way then. So, uh, yeah. So, so it's not ethical what you're doing. It's not fair what you're doing. Exactly. So yeah, that's a really good point, right? If you if you take something away from the population, you might as well, you give know, give back, back some, some maybe like way. a tax uh, incentive or something, or I don't know. Or yeah. or yeah, if 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 you want to control it somehow, yeah, it's always with the taxes, right? You know, mm. governments control and taxes are a way of like redistributing the wealth that's collected. Um, but then the rich obviously find ways to avoid that as well. So. So then we have to pay the taxes and then yeah. <laughs> it, it comes full circle all the time. Right. It's all like, it always, it's, but, it always comes around to us. It's a complicated issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The taxpayers. Um, well, this is a complicated thing to fix. Um, yeah, but you know what? We're about to fix it right here on Curiousaholic. Oh, damn. <laughs> so we found the solution. Yeah. No, we're not claiming that we found any solution here. Okay. You know, we're just giving our thoughts on the whole issue and, uh, yeah. I love how I started talking about Logan Paul and ended up talking about crypto. <laughs> you you saw the you saw the point. It's always uh what is it, uh six degrees away from crypto, everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We we always end up converging back to crypto. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so like you said, is is there a fix to all this? Are are we is there a way to balance out the wealth between the population without being, you know, unethical to a certain degree well i know of a fix um it might be okay i know of a fix there there's something that i'm aware about um but i don't know if that should maybe be on another <laughs> ah <laughs> you, know, you like I, this topic then huh? <laughs> yeah yeah i do yeah i like i've researched it quite a bit and you know seen alternatives and okay. such interesting so but i want to see what you're going to present Oh, I'm not going to present anything. We're about to, like, discuss. <laughs> oh, just I don't like, have a solution. Oh, oh, you don't, come on, man. I thought you had the found the... <laughs> no, no. I was just, you know, I was pretending to know the answers, but I don't. Oh, damn. Okay. What is what is it that... There isn't a perfect solution, right? There's always going to be, you know, sadly enough, people that take advantage of a situation and some people that are not benefiting at all right mm. there's always going to be rich there's always going to be poor i don't think we're ever going to fix you know you think i think <laughs> it's going to be difficult to fix that perf perfectly right okay well let me let me tell you this okay so any of those systems you know communism capitalism socialism whatever you know all those yeah. traditional economic systems they're all what what are they based on what are they based on? Like at the core, what is it that we use? Money. Yeah, exactly. So it's all a monetary system. You know, it's, mm -hmm. you know, you make me something, I'll pay you. And then you get that money and then you pay someone else. And then, you know, it circulates, right? The money yeah. is like the currency that circulates. It's either crypto, gold, you know, back in the day it was like sugar or salt, whatever it was, it yeah. was some sort of barter exchange. Um, 
what if we had a system that wasn't based on money? Well, yeah, that would fix all our problems, but is that ever going to happen? Okay, well, I don't know. I, I can't say if it would ever happen, but can you imagine a system that's not based on money? How do you think that would work? Yeah, it's a good point. I mean, if if there weren't if there wasn't money at all, then there would never be that imbalance, right? But exactly, but it then, might be a bit extreme to like remove that since we've been, be, you know, we've based our economy for years and years on exactly well, I know, that barter exchange, like you mentioned. It's right? obviously like a monumental change because right now what we also have, don't forget, it's not just the wealth; it's about the power. Yeah, you know, right. The richer you are, the more powerful you are, countries. It's about the knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> the knowledge, you know, <laughs> you have the power. Um, no, but yeah. Um, so so just as much as in between people, you know, someone who's rich, someone who's poor, that rich person has more power, then it's the same with like nations and countries. You know, the more money you have, the more powerful you are, right? Uh, so if there wasn't a monetary system, then countries would feel like, you know, where's my power? Where's my, you know, leverage? in things exactly yeah but we could definitely it, it, it is possible it does seem like a utopia what i'm talking about where there's no money it's all it's all fine and dandy but instead of having a monetary based system it's what is called a resource based economy okay have you ever heard of that i kind of heard of that actually but i don't remember exactly what it entails okay um resource wait let me guess resource based economy yeah what do you think that implies maybe like the workforce or something or like <laughs> how many uh resources they have like uh natural resources or something um uh, sort of okay so so basically a resource based economy is w what it says it's an economy that's based on the resources that we have you know, it's not basically a company who artificially inflates prices or says, you know, we're lacking a certain material and then they control those resources. No, as much resource there is, that is shared equally between everyone. And this sort of system is basically based on automation, technology and science more than politics and, you know, diplomacy and votes and elections and whatnot it's mostly based on how much can we produce with automation and technology so that there is an abundance of food of clothing of all the necessary things that humans need whereas that you know i'm not going at a at a company to work and produce something and then that is sold to someone else and then that is you know bought by another person there isn't kind of this exchange you know we're all as a collective you know, working to build these systems where they can produce an abundance so that there isn't like a lack of food or any necessity that people need. Anything you would wish for, it would be available. You know, because uh, think about it this way, like um, if you had all your basic needs met, mm -hmm. like think about it right now, you know, you had food, you had water, you had, you had everything that you needed. Would you go to work? No, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I can I guarantee you, you know what? Not even 80, 99% of people wouldn't go to their jobs. Yeah, exactly. I guarantee. Unless that one, you know, that one person would be people who really love their job and it's really something that they're passionate about. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, that's the reality of, uh, of the world we live in. But in a resource-based economy, automation and robots and technology would be the ones who would continually yeah, like produce the driving force the driving force and they would do the mundane work they would do the work the labor the manufacturing the you know the whole process by themselves you know us humans would be just the ones who would you know take care of those machines and you know it wouldn't be like you would be forced to do it you would just do it out of you know, um, the incentive to help out society because everything goes around and is shared, you know, mm -hmm. like you would have people who would be doctors and if you're sick, okay, you will go see a doctor, but you know, that doctor isn't like they're doing it for money or whatever. He's doing it because he knows, okay, he's doing this, but in exchange, he will have food available for him, water, clothing, housing, 
everything will be there i know it's kind of a weird thing to think about like how would someone do something for no money and wealth but no oh, well some people do it out of you know out of love <laughs> but well, essentially what it is right like some doctors they do their jobs just because they care about others and yeah exactly you know like if if you would take the money away from doctors would they still do it they they would do it if their needs were met you know mm. if they had everything they needed yeah because they love their job but uh well their work but if their needs weren't met maybe then they'll be like well look if i can't survive how can i help you yeah exactly right? yeah good point i feel like this uh, economy you you discussed yeah is like the economy we're gonna have when we move to mars <laughs> <laughs> yeah it does sound like some you know outer space dystopian. Uh, di well utopian more yeah well yeah no it's not dystopia <laughs> you think it's I like guess. scary um a little bit of both <laughs> no, no it wouldn't be like that i mean if there uh, are robots everywhere doing stuff uh yeah i know the whole scare of ai <laughs> taking control and you know terminators <laughs> coming to kill us um but no no it's just why would a robot take over if we didn't program it to malfunction <sighs> really oh my god I don't hey know. i work with i work with software all the time okay. let me tell you it never goes as planned <laughs> <laughs> it never goes as planned uh, okay anyways what i'm proposing isn't like you know oh all our problems are solved but it's a heck of a lot better in my opinion than you know the system we have that's based on money where yeah, yeah. you're i understand what you mean you know yeah it's a good it's a good alternative i for sure i mean hopefully one day we could get to that point where yeah because if you think about it right like i feel like the monetary system is all is is almost like it's so ancient right like we've always based society around yeah isn't how it how much time? wealth a person has and this amount of wealth will equate to you know this amount of resources yeah, exactly. whereas it's not the other way around right it's not like how many resources you have like you described will give you that that empowerment it's a little uh, different yeah because some companies control some resources and they decide the pricing and how they're gonna sell and they they create artificial uh shortages of resources when there is none you know exactly um like how what we, we print the money too right well yeah exactly <laughs> so how does that make sense it's like yeah are we really in debt or like are we inventing that we're in debt you know like it's it's, it's a, a debt is just you know an agreement exactly there's, there's no i don't have shackles but there's a number that says you owe this many you know points to us yeah. money is just like points yeah. how many points you have yeah exactly <laughs> so yeah maybe one day we'll we'll get away from the monetary system that's interesting for sure yeah it, not to say it will happen but it may be down the line it's a monumental shift but for that to happen there needs to be a change in people's values how do people value money and also your property because in that society you don't have like a property per se nothing is like a yours it's shared it's uh i don't know it sounds like a communist or sort of you know like <laughs> a scary dystopian, dystopian. yeah but I, w I would tell people you know if you wanted a cell phone you could have a cell phone and they're like well i'll go and grab myself 10 iphones i'm like yeah but why would you do that yeah Oh, I'll go like you know, put all the games and consoles and like hmm. ten, like ten TVs and twenty adapters. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like one of our friends loves adapters. Um, yeah, some people say you all, I'll take all bunch of stuff, but no, you wouldn't because you don't need that. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Why is can't something... be greedy? Yeah, exactly. In that society, greed wouldn't really exist because you would have money. Uh, not money. Sorry. <laughs> again money. you'd have assets you'd have assets yeah but you know what that that will also solve a lot crime have you thought of that well yeah because i mean <laughs> if you think about how many crimes are associated to money money and wealth every action movie that i watch is just money based crimes and you yeah. know and even to go even further than that how many wars are caused <laughs> by money yeah i think yeah right almost everything comes back to the green yeah that green piece of paper yeah 
Yeah. Like, think about it. You know, why does someone rob someone's house? Because they want the money. They want the resource. They want, you know, they're poor or something. But if they can go have all their basic needs met, why would they rob someone? Why would someone steal a car? They can go have a car if they wanted to. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a bit so, different. So you're you're saying there would be, like, almost like an unlimited supply of resources. No. Well, not an unlimited, but enough for the set yeah. population of yeah. where it is. Let's say okay, so like a, a very like the support, an abundance of supply. Yeah, for everyone to you know have all the basic requirements for their life. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Which is a like crazy the thing because you can see how automation is already taking over. Yeah. In manufacturing and all that, why can't automation create an abundance? They can. But it's limited by people having to work because people need jobs. And so companies are like, okay, here's a job, you know, do it one at, a, at an hour, whereas my machine can do 100 per hour. Yeah. <laughs> but then it also comes down to how much could our, our planet provide in terms of resources, right? Our because planet. manufacturing and, uh, you know, production of, of goods takes a, a big hit on our planet too right how much could we the planet give we don't that's the problem too well yeah that, that those whole processes need to be revised and yeah. you know you, in that society as well we would have very little pollution you know recycling would be a huge thing because now you know every company is for themselves well i want to make money boom i'm just going to produce stuff and I don't care if you put it to waste. I'm just going to sell it to you because you're just a consumer. Uh -huh. You know, you're just here to consume, consume, consume. I don't get a crap where that thing goes. Whereas in that society, you know, you would consume it, but then you would find a way to recycle it properly and then reuse it. Mm. You know, yeah. Waste would be cut down. Crime would be cut down. You know, there's a lot of things that will get solved, but yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. But let's, let's see that we weren't going to sh shift to this, other U utopia or you know yeah it's not a utopia but yeah you know, this, this this wonderland <laughs> or something i know it sounds like it yeah but you know like it does sound like it but in a sense like you said you know technology is so f freaking advanced sorry sorry my french but <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah you know our technology is so advanced that um you know we're maybe not that far off from that down yeah. the line if if people get together and you know instead of fighting they made bridges you know instead of having a military why don't you have people who can connect with other countries instead of trying to invade them and, and take all their oil or something yeah you know? no, i mean who would want oil mm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah. hey i mean we it would be great but let's say for now for okay. now sure, we're, sure. we're in okay. this monetary society i mean you asked for a solution for yeah. me that's what that i was, was seeing. that was a good solution that was cool yeah but, it's pretty cool know. i recommend people researching that more okay. um yeah but so let's say we were to to stick to our you know classic monetary system <laughs> where if logan paul fights floyd mayweather and he makes a buttload of money well yeah i guess you know to to have some of the regulation uh and the laws in place to control yeah. but here's the thing right yeah see that comes down to we got to be careful there's a fine line right mm. is it really beneficial for us to have that that the government always you know slapping us on the wrist every time we make like a an investment or something right we got to be careful there's like a fine line like, between oh yeah there's a balance to yeah make again so where is that balance where's that balance jeez <laughs> i don't know man this yeah is like it's, kind of, uh, it's difficult it's difficult it, to know and I, to be honest i don't think anyone has really figured that out right no i think it's kind of hard because as, as i said it, with a monetary system it's very hard to get a balance you know you're always gonna have it tipped yeah just, just exactly. slightly you know there's always gonna be that one person you know maybe almost 90 percent of people are, will be equal but there will be still some people in the upper in the upper end you know, yeah. we are all equal but there are people who are more equal <laughs> you know what it is <laughs> no, i don't know what that is animal but... farm oh okay the, the, the rules yeah. that they say uh, <laughs> everyone's equal but there are people who are more equal <laughs> just like that's what makes sense yeah yeah i mean hey 
hopefully we can figure that out one day and you know it would benefit as many of us as possible but i don't know if it's it's going to be feasible to make everyone happy no exactly i mean in, in this system yeah i i don't think yeah that's yeah. possible really. there's always going to be an imbalance somewhere i mean i didn't want to close on a on a negative note here but uh you okay. know i don't know if we're ever going to really find a solution to this <laughs> well as i said yeah there, there, there is there is there is a possibility for change yeah, yeah. But, but we exactly we'd have to change the whole entire system it's not a change within the system it's entirely changing the system right well me the way i see things is that what we're doing with politics and uh, laws and uh creating legislation and regulation it's just patchwork it's kind of like putting a band-aid on a symptom you know oh you know there's money people are making a lot of money there boom slap a band-aid but why don't you treat the root cause of yeah. the issue but why would you want to do that because you know you're already vested in that system to change that is to face chaos exactly you know and uh exactly uncertainty I mean, and who knows maybe going back to the ai point you know yeah maybe all some of these systems rely on you know I, I'm just I'm just saying something right now, but you know, a lot of these systems might be based on like that that economic number that you were talking about earlier, and you know maybe it'll cause some systems to crash or something, or you know, everything is is related to our economy, and you don't know how the world is going to react when that big change happens. You know, um, definitely. I mean, because we are so used to having power. Yeah and controlling but even in terms of programming right all our banking systems and you know like how is that going to react if if we change to a non-monetary system well obviously to go to a system like that you don't just say okay well tomorrow nobody has money yeah okay. it'd be a very slow it would be a very slow like process. to get to that it would take maybe uh, i'm just saying like maybe a hundred years yeah maybe more who knows uh, well yeah think about all the the systems you have to undo undo yeah um, think about how many there are well one step that i would find to go to that is to have a universal basic income have you heard of that yeah i kind of i kind of get what that is yeah where you know as you said you know some people don't have enough money to eat well that can cover that you know the basic needs yeah part so everyone gets you know let's say two thousand dollars a month they're able to survive and then slowly you know when everyone's kind of on an equal playing field then you know you go towards that system i don't know how the transition would go yeah it'd be difficult for sure it's very difficult it kind of reminds me of you know how like in the year 1999 when like all the you know the computer systems and all the programming was done for that year you know how it was like the the last basically millennium millennium yeah and then when it switched to the year 2000s oh yeah it messed up it like, messed up so many like uh it systems and stuff it kind of i don't know it kind of rings a bell for that as well you know who knows how it would re how how it would all react. these you know technologies would react to just that big shift you know uh yeah there's a lot to think about and i'm not saying it's going to be easy it's just you know where do we want to go as a whole as a yeah. society you know do we want to evolve for the better or always keep fighting you know who gets how much yeah right hey i'm i'm with you on this one i'd rather be like you know all i mean united and uh, uh, most people i've you know told this resource-based economy they've said hell yeah man you know where are we starting you know yeah, <laughs> where can I'm we sure, I, i'm sure a lot of people would, would like that you know because why would you say no to have all your basic needs met and in that society people are like well so i don't work I don't do anything no you do whatever pleases your heart whatever you want to have passion in and work towards and that will help other people and that's how it will be you're not going to be forced to work yeah. well i'm just going to sit home and watch tv mm. no i don't think so yeah well then you're gonna you're gonna ruin your own life right you're not going to be fulfilled as a person right? uh, yeah yeah exactly. not everything is about you know the change you know like uh going to work is not just about making money it's about fulfilling yourself as a person as well so it's that would be great in a sense because if if everyone would be on the same playing field then people wouldn't be working for the the cash they'd be working, working for, themselves. for themselves and then that would help you know the people 
around them yeah as a society that it's an interesting idea for sure yeah hey but uh yeah we we rambled so, quite a bit about this <laughs> any uh but as i said you know that's like a another podcast on its own maybe one yeah. day all right let's change the <laughs> yeah so are there do you have any final thoughts about this <sighs> final thoughts yeah um i mean definitely we could do better even in this current society uh and this uh, economic system um, yeah so that wealth is a bit more evenly distributed um what else could i say but yeah i just think that c cooperation and collaboration is more beneficial than constantly competing and yeah. saying everyone for their own you know pure capitalism don't care if you're poor you're scraping for food i have my millions of dollars and you know i'm just gonna fight for a few minutes <laughs> <laughs> yeah have fight for a few minutes and <laughs> be rich after you know yeah exactly well yeah i think you you made your your point um <laughs> i made a whole uh <laughs> yeah you, <laughs> argument yeah, whole argument hey you know what that's good <laughs> if you're into it you're into it yeah. um so yeah my final thoughts i think you you said it well i mean or it's not perfect our system is not perfect at all um the monetary system that is mm -hmm. there are some improvements to be made but i think we still need to be careful uh to to have you know government come in too much into our our monetary system in a sense in our economy and let people obtain their wealth but also not impose too much right but it'd be great to have that collaborative effort in a sense so that everyone has what they need and then everyone you know everyone can share it, and yeah, take a part of that wealth empowers themselves without having to take out that power from other people you know yeah yeah where 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 some rich people you know just have so much wealth that they just keep taking it yeah from others. because that's the thing right i mean when rich people get money yeah it's like almost like the poor get less of it you know that's almost like how it works yeah because let's say it's a huge cake and they have like half of it yeah. you know exactly. it's like no you have to find ways to give a piece to everyone right exactly so yeah i have uh, nothing else to say that was, uh, it was a good discussion <laughs> yeah it was a good topic uh sorry we kind of went off <laughs> yeah we went off but it was there it was all it contributed to the main point so that was yeah. that was the goal it was my main thesis of this yeah. episode <laughs> you're gonna write a thesis paper after this <laughs> yeah exactly but call it the dystopian society <laughs> oh of, come on it's not this of Heiko. <laughs> <laughs> no no it's not that bad all right um, guys all righty well that was fun yeah was that was good. a good one all right man play us out oh, catch you guys later catch bye. you guys on the next one bye thanks for tuning into this episode of Curiousaholic. Our show is available on all of your favorite streaming platforms such as Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. If you're watching us on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and make sure to leave a comment letting us know what you've been curious about. We release new episodes every single week just like this one. But until next time, stay curious, folks. Stay curious, folks.